Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radacad. In this video, I'm going to talk about data flow. What is data flow or basically data flow gen two in Microsoft Fabric or Data Factory? Uh, how does it work with the rest of the Microsoft Fabric? And we'll go and see an example of building it together. Uh, data flow is uh, a component of Microsoft Fabric. If you are new to Microsoft Fabric, it's announced last week at Microsoft Build. It's an end-to-end -end, uh, software as a service cloud uh, solution for data analytics uh, provided by Microsoft. I have a different video explaining that, so go and check that out. I have also a video explaining how to enable it. Um, and when you enable that, um, it has uh, multiple workloads, a workload for data engineering, one for data integration, one for storage, one for um, data warehouse, the BI, uh, for example, Power BI is the BI elements of that. But for the data integration part of it, we have Data Factory. Data Factory includes two main elements to do the data integration. One of them is data pipeline, which I explained in a previous video. You can go and check it. And the other one is data flow. Data flow for those of you coming from Power BI is a familiar subject. Microsoft announced Power Query data flows in Power BI like about three years ago. Uh, and we have been using it for a while. Um, now, this data flow is called data flow gen 2, which is a slightly different from the data flow. I'm not going to focus on differences in this video. I'm mainly focusing on like getting started for those of you not familiar with data flow much, what it is, how you can get it working. So when you um, are in Microsoft Fabric portal, I'll just close this one so you can see how I actually built something like that. Uh, so when you are in Microsoft Fabric portal, uh, you have the option to click here and go to different workloads. When you click on Data Factory workload, that is when you can go and see um, two options to create two types of object, Data Pipeline and Data Flow Gen 2. Data Pipeline is more like a control flow execution of uh, different activities, like for example, when this is done, um, send an email or create a loop, if condition, those kind of things. And data flow is where you do the ETL. ETL stands for extract, transform, load. It extracts data from different sources. It transforms the data using the Power Query data transformation engine, and then it loads it into a destination. Microsoft has been using um, different tools and services for ETL uh, for a long time. First, we had DTS, Data Transformation Services. Then we had SSIS, SQL Server Integration Services. We had ADF, Azure Data Factory, which this pipeline basically comes from Azure Data Factory. Then we had Power Query, which was really successful data integration uh, tool. You can do pretty much all the data transformation and you don't need to do much coding. If you want to do coding, it has a language for itself. It's a powerful language, um, M, and the tool, it's, uh, the engine itself is quite powerful, Power Query. So Dataflow is empowered by that Power Query engine and you can build a data transformation using that. So I'll go ahead and create a Dataflow Gen 2. Um, this will load the Power Query Editor online or Dataflow Editor if you want to call it, but we call it Power Query Editor. This is a place that you can get data from a bunch of sources. You can even say get data from other sources and we have a lot of different sources sources available for Power Query. You can even build a custom connector for that yourself. I have explained it in another article and video. You can go and check it out. But for this example, I'm focusing on getting data from Excel and my Excel file sits in uh, OneDrive. So I'll browse there to get my Excel file from there. And once I've got that, we would um, Get data from that. So this Excel file has um, AdventureWorks example in it, which you can download from uh, Radicat website. Uh, and I'm going to get data from a bunch of tables and build something with it. Let's say, for example, I have the product, product category, product subcategory, and new customer. I can select all of these. This will show me a preview of the data in the uh, in here, so that I can see what I'm getting. Uh, then I would say create. This will load that into the Power Query online editor. This editor is a very 
useful and simple editor to work with. We have a bunch of transformations at the top uh, and there are more transformations. If I go to the transform tab, uh, I have the data. This is the preview of data for the table that I'm looking at. After the transformation applied, the list of transformations is in the right hand side as applied steps. In the left hand side, I have list of queries or tables and there are more transformations when I go to the transform tab. It's a simple to use uh, data transformation uh, tool. Uh, I can do some data transformation steps. Now, each of these steps I'm going to show you has a lot of details in it. I wouldn't go into the details because this is just a getting started examples. So I'll just do these, do these steps and explain along the way very simply. Let's say I want to come, I want to um, flatten these three tables instead of having product, product, subcategory, and category. I want to merge them together, have one product table to build my star schema. I want to have one product dimension. So I'll click here. I'll see all, most of the transformations I can apply on this table. One of them is merge queries as new. So I'll merge this query with the product subcategory based on product category key. I can even choose the merge type which i explained in another video it is not enough time to talk about it in this video uh, one, once i merge them together this is the output table the output table would have will have the second table as a sub table on this i would expand that and i can say from the second table i want product subcategory name and product category key because i want them to use that to merge with the product category so this is my output here, then I would go and do another merge. Uh, there are lots of transformations as you can see here, but I'm just showing you some of those at the moment. I'm focusing on merge. So let's do merge queries. This time I merge that with product category based on product category key here and product category key here. And I would just again, use the normal merge. You can do fuzzy merge as well for situations that you have text values and you want to define some threshold of how similar you want them to be. Uh, the result of this, I expand that and I would get product category name from this. And here is my product category name added to this table. I can go ahead and remove those columns that I don't need. For example, products of category key, I don't need that anymore. Let's say all of these columns, pretty much I don't need them. I would keep the English product name and I would remove all of these as well. Uh, you see a lot of null values here. That is because not every product and product, uh, not every product has category and subcategory. If I scroll down, you'll see that there are some products with category and subcategory. So this is the result of my merge. You see this is added as a new table in my list called merge. I'm going to rename this. I would call this product and I would disable the load of those three products because as you see this created something called computed entity. Again, these are more advanced topics. I would um, um, skip those for now. Uh, you can check my other videos about computed entity, what it is. Uh, for this example, I disable the load of those. So this would be a normal product entity. And then I would call this one just customer. I wouldn't apply any uh, specific transformations on that. So as you see, transformations are as simple as that. I merge that and this diagram view really nicely show how these things are. If you are interested in learning more about the language behind the scene, you can right click on a table and see advanced editor. In the advanced editor, you will see the script behind the scene that generates this. This is called M script. M is the language. Um, M stands for data mashup. This is the language that you can learn. Again, I have videos and articles about it, um, which explain different aspects of it, but you don't need to learn it in details because as you see this is automatically generated when you do the data transformation in the graphical interface so let's say you build your data transformation what is the next step after that you want to load the data into a destination data flows basically um, power bi data flows or power platform data flows usually they load data into two places two places. Uh, if it is Power Platform data flows, it would be into Dataverse. If it is Power BI data flows, usually it is in Azure Data Lake storage, Gen 2. 
Now, because this is Dataflow Gen 2, it gives you also the ability to add data destination. This is one of the differences between Gen 2 and the previous version or generation of Dataflow. So you can go and choose a destination. Uh, now, this destination, at the moment, we have these four options. In the future, we might have more options. Um, you can choose a table and connect to any of these you want. So let's say I want to have a lake house and I have explained about lake house in another video. Go and check it out. Um, how to create a simple lake house. Um, it's like a data warehouse, but with the ability that you can also load files into that. Um, now I have a lake house here that I can um, enter the data into that. So let's say I would just choose this one. And uh, when I select the lake house, this would give me the option to, let's say, um, how do you want to load this data into that? We have two options. We would be able to replace the data in the table. Now this is a new table, so we wouldn't really deleting anything, but replace would delete and recreate versus we have the option to do append. Appends mean that it would add the new data into the existing data. So this graphical view would show you what it really means. So I do the save settings. Same thing can be done for the other table, for the customer table. I can go and do the same thing, connect to the lake house. I would go and choose that. You can have different destination. It doesn't have to be exactly the same destination for both of these. Uh, but I would go and use the same destination. So here is my destination. And I would go and choose replace again. So my data flow is built. You can have multiple tables in the data flow as you have seen. Then I would publish my data flow. Now I would have put a, a better name as well, but for now I just called it data flow five. The publish process is defining the metadata, storing it, all those details and creating the table behind the scene, but it wouldn't load the data into those tables yet. For that, I need to do the refresh of the data flow. Uh, so I will wait for this to publish. Once it is published, I would refresh it. The refresh of Dataflow can be scheduled. You can say, for example, I want this Dataflow to run on a daily basis, let's say two times a day, eight times a day. That would be depending on your licensing, how, how frequent you can refresh it. I have um, uh, publish is done. I can do the refresh. I will just click on that refresh here. While that refresh is going, I'll show what the schedule refresh would look like. I would go to the schedule refresh of another one just to show you. I can enable the refresh. I would have the option to do daily, weekly, and then I can add times as I want. For example, I might say eight in the morning, then 10 in the morning, you can refresh it. And usually this will send a notification if it fails to Dataflow owner. If you want more detail options here, the better would be embedding this Dataflow inside the data pipeline. This is what I explained in another video. So um, you can embed it inside the data pipeline and then have other control flow elements around it, like on failure, go and do this, on success, go and do this or on success of this, create a loop structure, go and loop in another table and do something totally different. So there are a lot of configuration around it. You can also go and see the refresh history of this. If this has been refreshed multiple times, what happened on that refresh history? For example, in this one, I've ran this multiple times, the execution of that and the details of that. Um, so basically it's a ETL extract transform load um, tool and service in the cloud. It doesn't have to be related to Power BI. It is just mm, a pure tool by itself can be used to load data into those destinations that I mentioned. And then the rest of the Microsoft Fabric can use those results, like the data that loaded into the lake house can be then used in uh, other places. Let me just go and check. Is it still running? No, it is loaded already in there. So if I go to my lake house, I should be able to see that data. I think my lake house was called um, was called this staging lake house. Uh, so this should have those tables with the data in it. And as I said, the, I have the explanation of the lake house in another video. So in summary, uh, so here are my uh, 
tables. I'm not sure if I load, yeah, I load it here. So I have a customer table and a product table. Now, because it's a staging structure, it loads as parquet file, which is a little bit different than normal tables. If you want to load it into a normal table, then you can load it into not the staging structure, the table itself, the data, the lake house itself. Again, I would skip those areas, uh, but be sure that this is already loaded. So in summary, um, Dataflow is a place that you can do the data transformation, extracting data from variable sources, transforming it, loading it into a destination. Once you have done that, you can uh, then embed that inside the data pipeline to so have other more control flow around it. I would strongly recommend to go and watch the data pipeline video as well. Uh, but there are much more details in the data flow itself. It's Power Query is a strong tool. So there are lots of transformations. Each transformations are powerful. We have things such as query folding, M scripting languages. It would take time to go and learn these. But I hope this video helped you to have some understanding about what Dataflow is, how you can use it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have more questions, feel free to uh, write that in the comments below. And if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on these topics. Until the next video, bye.